good, man. Just hold my camera. We <laughs> <laughs> don't want the phone to cut out now, and we should be all right. So back in about the um, early 90s, uh, there, was a, there was a World Championships in Scandinavia, Sweden, or Norway, something like that. And um, they had this, uh, a sedge part of it, which is predominantly all dead here, um, stacked the way that we know the DHG, uh, the, sorry, the, the, the hedgehog is, is, is tied. Um, and these guys had had this as a sort of like a secret pattern for ages. And then I believe it was Trout Fisherman, there was an article showing this fly, yeah. Um, and a guy called Sandy Nicholson in Orkney saw it and he thought, yeah, that would be really good. So up in Orkney, in a lot of wild places in Scotland, the Wales would be the same. But they like, when you've got that, um, you pull your fly hard and it goes under the water and then it pops back up again, yeah. Like, so Loch Ordys was, were, and that style of fly was great for really dense style of flies. Muddlers were fantastic for that. Um, so, um, yeah. So what I do uh, with my DHEs, and so the wind, sorry, when the DHEs come about, then uh, what they saw was a fly that was going to be really buoyant. Put these guys up there, fished them uh, four flies and about, uh, oh, say, two feet apart, yeah, on a midge tip or a... a, a Sphinx tip line. So when you cast in and they're, they're settling, they're heavily ginked. Um, and then when you pull it, they go under the water and they pop back through. And it's that popping up through action that that, that can be that can be devastating. Yeah. Um, not that that's the only way you fish them, but that was the way that, that they devised them to, to be done. And that's where they picked it up in all. And that's pretty much where all the hedgehogs came from. They're called sedgehogs as well. Um, you get your head and your hands to play with you go up north and you call them sedgehogs because. A sedgehog is an adaptation of a hedgehog, yeah. So the sedgehog is basically, Stan Deadly took the, the hedgehog concept, said, I can make a sedge pattern out of this, um, cut down the numbers of deer, the bunches of deer here you've got coming forward, and, the, and the, the buoyant version would be about four or five, yeah. And he cut it down to, to I think it was three, and then put a hackle at the front for that, that sedge profile. But to be fair, sedgehogs and, hedge, sedgehogs and hedgehogs are... are for all intents and purposes, it's just the same fly. So I quite like um, all of ones. Um, and again, to simplify things uh, a lot, um, what I do is I, I use a microglin thread. Yeah. So as you see there, that's a golden olive microglin. Um, it's quite thick, so it's going to be probably equivalent to 6 0. Um, um, but the thing with that is that uh, it fills the hoop fast, but this is quite a buoyant, uh, fairly heavy uh, fly anyway, so you get away with it, yeah. There's no finesse required in a hedgehog. So what I'm doing to start with, I just like to put in a, a, a fluorescent tag. In this case, it's chartreuse. And all I'm doing is just running the thread down and back over itself, just to form that. Yeah. What size hook, Alan? A lot of hot spot. This is a size 10. Yeah. I'll tie hogs then. Usually I want my hogs between 10s and 14s. Um, depending on what I'm, what the water conditions like, what the weather's like. And if I'm trying to imitate something, obviously if the sedge, if the sedge is the small sedge in the water, then then um, well use a smaller fly if you're if you're matching the hatch, yeah. So I've got the, the uh, that's going to be my hot spot. Yeah, if I hit this with the torch, you'll see. Yeah. And then I'm right into, as uh, I showed before, that's that's me using the micro blunt thread. And I'm just going to catch this thread in as the body. Yeah. Now, the thing with micro blunt is that, you, yeah, it's not as strong as, as wax thread. You've just got to learn how to use it, okay? And if I break it, then obviously I haven't. So, <laughs> so um, you just to, just to bear that in mind. And sometimes, well, in fact, actually, I'll show you at the bottom at the end, there's a wee, a wee, a wee hack, a wee trick I, I use, just to help make these flies a bit more robust. These flies will take a lot of punishment, by the way. So, take a bunch of deer here. Again, I stack it.
Now this time we're turning the, the snarker the opposite direction that we did with the DHEs because we're probably going to have the wing facing back the way. So we've got our bunch there. There's always a open broken fibre in there, isn't it? Catch it us in here and then we'll just take the really grip the hook because you want this the, the bunch of deer is sat on top of the, the, the it's a wing so you're not spinning it it's not like a muddler head or nothing so really grip the hook tight so you've got that locked in place and then i don't you, you take a loose turn but then i just usually don't take a loose turn like you would do with a muddler head and then let everything go keep it dead tight and then and, and lock it down yeah and just put a few locking turns in there but you can see you know when you've, you've got it locked and tight because you can see how the, the deer hair tags are all flaring up there like that yeah and if you draw your fingers away any broken thread fibers will um will come away with that yeah then what i do is i gather all the ends up pull them all together like this pull them up on the top of the, the hook and then if, if you pull them straight up and then basically take the scissors parallel at the hook shank cut it back then when it sits back down again you've got see that taper there yeah support that and then just lock those tag ends down yeah you throw as many turns in there as you like and just go back up and that's you form the body and you come forward so you've got this this inverted cone if you like taper facing forward and um, so you know you've got that locked down in place, and then what you do is you just go away and repeat the process, come in, uh, the wing again, and just you keep following these steps forward and uh, forming the wing as you go. This time when you put it on, you go about 45, so you keep it at about 45 angles, so you're slightly short on what you've done. You, you're not overlaying the wing all the time, you're, you're keeping it short, yeah? And then that gives you that nice, well, Hedgehog profile. Same again. A wee tip sometimes um, to, you're going to get thread drag. That's going to be inevitable. If you tip the uh, slightly angle the, the deer hair stack towards you when you're tying, if you see them, my fingers are pulled it towards me there like that, yeah. Um, that helps to put the hats against the thread dragging the, the deer hair around the far side. Take this out the way. I'll tell you what, Derek, if you thought that my tying bench was a mess when I was tying deer hair and ergers, then Jesus. You got some overing to do there. Yeah, I can't yeah. I didn't mind to very much. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. So it's just the same again. So we'll just um, uh, lock those things in place and form the, form the body. Yeah. What had actually happened there was I caught a couple of the deer hair threads uh, um, and fibers on this side i've just cut them out yeah and then it's the same again just repeat that process so this will be a third bunch of deer here we're putting in here yeah you'll soon learn how much and how little to put in you you, you learn obviously if you put in too little you you'll, you'll know because the wings just got no no body to it at all um, and if you put in too much you just a disaster try to tie it in so you if you can see there um the, the bunch that i've got would be similar to like a artist paintbrush uh, um, head yeah not a flipping decorator's paintbrush head <laughs> same again just twist it tighter towards myself i've kept it that little bit short and then throw some tons in there Pull all the tag ends out the way, what have you? Yeah. Clean that out the way. Just lock that down. This time I'm not going to go all the way up the front of the, the, the hook there because I'm going to that'll that will fill the head up. I want to leave some room for for uh, how I'm going to finish this fly. Now, the original DHEs, um, sorry, keep going back to DHE. The original hogs had. Um, had the pre knotted legs on them, yeah. And um, which I like to keep. Uh, to be fair, I'm not actually entirely sure it makes the slightest bit of difference in how this fly fishes, um, but it looks great, yeah. So, 
So what we do is, and what I've done here is I've actually taken, um, yeah, these are hopper legs. So it's like two fibers tied together, you know, you know for, for American hopper flies, yeah. And um, I use them on my DHEs. Now I'd say, oh, it's because it's better. No, it's just because I got a load of them flipping hopper legs and I've never got a other use, use for them because I prefer the <laughs> double motted ones, yeah. But <laughs> they work great in this, yeah. So I'm not going to sit here and lie to you saying, oh, that's far better, guys. You, you should use hopper legs all the time. It gives you a better profile. It's not a load of shite. It's just use up the materials that I have in front of me. Yeah. So there we go. We've got that. We've got your hopper legs in. And then we're going to take, make your, your head punch your gear here, if you like, thinner. Yeah. So past the bout of, of the, um, the, uh, the ones that you're using in the wing. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with just this massive clump of hair and no way to tie it off. Yeah. In fact, even that, I would say, guys, I'm going to half that because that's that's just too much. And same again. Just come bring it just a little bit shorter. Yeah. Lock that in place there. Now, there's loads of ways to finish this. You can trim this off and leave it like a half muddled head. You can. You can you can make that last bunch of deer here a different colour if you want to be, yeah, be, be very attractive. Um, or you can just do what I'm going to do, just trim it off back tight behind the eye of the hook. Draw this tag ends back. And I'm saying you could finish it off and that's it, yeah? So let's say you've got like a half muddler head, yeah? Or if you want to give some more colour to the head of the fly, then you build up using your, your, uh, your micro glint. As you can see, it, it builds it up very quick. It's a thick thread. You've just got to bear, the mind, bear that in mind. Yeah. And then I like you putting a bit of flash into the, the, the head of the fly. So who is it? Come on. Stuff right in front of me. Yeah. So we take that um, uh, spectra dubbing again, or your, your flashy dubbing, and then we're going to put in a soft Muddler head, you could call it. Yeah, just just make the head up with the with the um, your sparkly dubbing. That's going to float all day. That is. And you when you when you get this up, that that that's it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's just exactly that. It'll float all day there. Yeah. So I've just put a couple of locking butt finishes into there. I've got all my materials from my last fly sticking to my hand. Now. And then the final step with this particular fly, um, just take your your um, your velcro scrubber. Now, if you hadn't done this with micro glint um, and you're using thread and dubbing the bodies, and <coughs> the, which is the original one, so you've got your little stack dub bits in between. Brush the whole body out in the, in the hair up and up, but brush it up into the wing. Yeah. But what I do with this one is just catch it, just catch those. Sparkle fibers and lift them out. I'll tell you actually, um, the center fly is driven because the, the, um, the, the fibers are much longer. Yeah? When you tie them into the head, you can get a great and fantastic silhouette because the, the, these hackle fibers are longer. They can, they can lie right away back over the fly like that. And it, it, it can look great. Um, and these are these particular ones I use there are shorter. It's a different yeah. And dubbing that, and really, guys, that's it. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Um, change the color of your bodies. What the we the we um, sneak a tip, if you like, is what I would do then is when I come to varnish the head. Yeah, I take my varnish body, uh, my varnish brush, make it as dry as I can get it, just about. Yeah, 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 and then just just drop, just dab it on the bottom of the, and, and only when I'm using micro glint. And only because it's it, it's a soft material that draws up into your thread, and then that just um, helps to give a little bit more strength to the to the, the thread itself. Yeah, because it, it it can be easy burst um, uh, when you're on like eighteen fish or something. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's uh, just a robust, fantastic uh, 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 lock pattern. Um, I have to say that um, probably about. I would say um, certainly about seventy percent of my lock fishing now would be, would be using hedgehogs everywhere. Yeah, and I use it for sea trout and saltwater as well. And same thing that pop up pop ups there. 
Um, anywhere you would use a muddler, you, you can you, you, you work and you probably get arguably you would get better results on a on a, on a hedgehog. Um, and that's it. That's 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 all there is to it. It's 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 purposely scruffy. You, know, you want it to be looking as though it's been chewed by a boot. That doesn't try. Yeah. Um, and the lady go. That's when I've rattled it in a wee um, he, um, hedgehog for you as well. Um, and let's say if you guys that are coming down to BFFI yeah, to drop in fast, and we can do all this. You know, get to see it live. Yeah, no problem. It's certainly a better light because that's not really. You've seen it better now. You've got it locked in focus, but mm. yeah, it's not. It's not really that great. Yeah, it's losing focus already. Yeah. Um, so if you do, so if you do me a favour, Alan, yeah, if you mm -hmm. can photograph them and put them on the WhatsApp group for yeah, us, I'll do that. Yeah, not a, not a problem. Yeah, Magic. not a problem at all. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. There we go, guys. I'm getting. I'm hearing. Um, I'm hearing my young year old female Labrador barking away at the back there, so. I'm yeah. going to have to call it a night 